Hello from Halifax. This is Joe with Joe the World Creations, and today we're going to be making my simple scarf crochet pattern. This is a very easy crochet scarf, and we're going to get right to the video tutorial. All of the details for this pattern, such as the exact sizing, the materials used, like the yarn and hook size, as well as all the written instructions are available for free on my website, or you can purchase the print ready ad free PDF, and there are links to both below this video. All right, let's get started. All right, a couple quick things before we get started is one, I've run out of the same color that I used to make the scarf, so I'm using a slightly different color purple for this video tutorial. So with our hook size, I've used a K hook for this entire pattern. Some people prefer to go up one hook size to start for the starting chains only. Um, I personally don't, but if you find that you crochet quite tightly, you may want to go up one hook size for the starting chains only. All right, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is make a slip knot. So we're going to make a loop, and then we're going to pull our yarn through the loop to create another loop and pull tight. Then we're going to place our loop on our hook and once again pull tight. The next thing we're going to be doing is making our starting chains and I wanted to mention that the scarf is made from the chain row up, meaning that the number of starting chains determines how wide your scarf is going to be. I chained 21 which created a scarf that is approximately 7 inches wide. If you would like your scarf to be wider or thinner, you're welcome to make more or less starting chains. You'll want those starting chains to be in multiples of two plus one, which means you'll want to have an even number and then add one for the starting chain so that you'll actually have an odd number of starting chains. So to make a scarf that is approximately seven inches wide, we're going to chain 21. Once again, you're welcome to chain however many you'd like, as long as it's an odd number in multiples of two plus one. So we're gonna chain 21. So one, two, three, four. You go ahead and make 21. For this video, I'm just gonna be making a small swatch to show you exactly how to make it. Come back to the video when you have your number of starting chains and we will do row one together. To start row one, we are going to be working into the back ridge loops of the chain. So really quickly here, we're gonna be working into the second chain from the hook. This is the top loop and this is the bottom loop. If you slightly twist the chain, you can see these bumps along the back and these are the back ridge loops that we're going to work into. So in the second chain from hook we're going to be inserting our hook into this back ridge loop. That's the second one from the top. So into that second chain from hook slightly twist insert your hook into that second back ridge loop and into this we are now going to single crochet. So we're going to yarn over, pull our yarn through that back ridge loop, yarn over, pull our yarn through both loops on our hook. In the very next back ridge loop, we are going to double crochet. So we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into the next back ridge loop, yarn over and pull our yarn through. So we have three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull our yarn through two loops, two loops left, yarn over and pull the yarn through the two remaining loops. So now we have single crocheted and double crocheted. 
in the next back ridge loop, we are going to single crochet. In the next back ridge loop, we are going to double crochet. And you're going to repeat this all the way across. Single crochet in the next chain, double crochet in the next chain, single crochet, double crochet, all the way across. So you're welcome to put me on pause, complete the row, repeating single crochet, which I've just done, and then double crochet in the next chain. And come back to the video as you're nearing the end of the row and we'll do that together. So I'm nearing the end of the row. I've just made a double crochet stitch. I have two chains left. So since I just made a double crochet, my next stitch is going to be a single crochet. And now I have one chain left and into that last chain, I'm going to double crochet. So nothing that special happens at the end of the row. I just wanted to make sure you know that the last stitch is a double crochet stitch. At the end of row one, you should have a total of 20 stitches. So feel free to count your stitches and ensure that you have 20. And that's of course, if you chained 21 to start with, if you chained a different number, you should have one less than the number that you started with, your number of starting chains. So to complete row one, we are going to chain one and turn. To start row two, we are going to single crochet into the first stitch, which is the stitch that's attached to the chain. So into that first stitch, we are going to single crochet. In the next stitch, we're going to double crochet. In the next stitch, single crochet. In the next stitch, double crochet. We're going to repeat this all the way across the row. Single crochet in the next stitch, double crochet in the next stitch. So there's a single and then the next stitch a double crochet. And it's very easy to see what stitch you need to do next because if you can see I've just made a double crochet stitch so my next stitch is a single crochet but I can also tell because the stitches I'm working into I'm always working into the opposite stitch. So this stitch is bigger than the next one. This is actually at the top of a double crochet stitch from the previous row. So whenever I see a larger stitch, I know I need to single crochet into it. And then the next stitch after that is smaller, which is the top of a single crochet stitch from the previous row. So I know I need to double crochet into that. So into this larger stitch, I'm going to single crochet. Into the smaller stitch, I'm going to double crochet. So just repeat that all the way across the row. When you get to the end of the row, so here I am, I've just made a double crochet. The next stitch should be a single crochet. And the next stitch, the very last stitch of the row is always a double crochet stitch. Each row has ex the exact same number of stitches. You should always have 20 stitches um, in every row, but the chain one that we did to start the row does not count as a stitch. So only count the single crochets and double crochet stitches that we did, and you should always have a total of 20. After row two, you can measure your work. It should measure approximately seven inches. And now to complete row two, we are going to chain one and turn. For row three and on, we're going to do the exact same thing we just did in row two. For the remainder of the pattern, it's the exact same thing all the way through. In the very first stitch, single crochet. In the next stitch, double crochet. In the next stitch, single crochet. 
and in the next stitch, double crochet. You're going to do that all the way across every row, always ending the last stitch with a double crochet stitch. So you're going to repeat row two over and over and over again until you reach your desired height for your scarf, which is actually going to be the length. I um, did approximately 168 rows, which made my height six feet, but you're welcome to make the length whatever you'd like, but six feet is approximately 168 rows. I recommend ending after an even number row, so 168, 170, 150, etc. So after reaching your desired height, what you're going to do is you're going to fasten off and weave in your loose ends using a yarn needle and come back to the video and we are going to talk about the fringe or tassels um, together. So I have a whole video and written guide on how to cut and attach and trim the tassels or fringe. So I'm not gonna go into detail because I'm gonna link to both the written guide and the video tutorial right underneath this video. But I wanna mention a couple things that are specific to this pattern. In the written instructions, I say to put the tassels, attach the tassels when the right side of the scarf is facing up. But in all honesty, you, you really, really can't tell the difference of which side is which. So if you want, you can put the right side up, which just means that if you finished after an even number row, your last stitch will be on the left, and then you just flip over your work and the right side will be facing up. Each tassel has three strands of yarn, and then once it's attached, it creates a tassel with six strands of yarn. You're gonna wanna cut strands that are eight inches long, and you're gonna need a total of 60 strands. You're welcome to make these tassels shorter or longer, and if you want to do that, just cut smaller or bigger strands. Where I've placed my tassels was I placed one on the very first chain or stitch. Then I skipped two chains or stitches, and then I placed the, the tassels in every other stitch or chain, depending on what side you're working into. So there are 10 tassels on either side and I trimmed mine. I started to trim mine at, um, to be 3.75 inches, but I have kept making them a little shorter. So a little shorter here that you can see now, but you're welcome to make them any length that you would like. So that video and the guide is gonna show you step-by-step step how to cut your strands, attach the tassels to your project, and how to trim the ends. So that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I hope you enjoy making this pattern. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.